Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Financial Practices webcast and this time we actually going to have a, a use case scenario which we're going to explain how to make that happen uh, within your client side web part development. So we're talking about cascading property pane drop downs uh, implemented as a property pane uh, within your client side web part. My name is Vesa Juvonen, I'm a senior program manager uh, from SharePoint Engineering and with me today uh, responsible of the demo is will be Waldek Mastercards. Waldek, will you do the intros? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Vale Masikas. I work at Rancor. I am developer. Um, I am also an MVP. And today I will talk um, um, about how you build cascading property pane drop downs with SharePoint framework. Excellent. Or we will actually, Valdek, talk about that one together, just to be precise. Well, yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> totally. I will show, we will talk. Yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, cool. Uh, before we go to the actual content and the actual use case, uh, what are we going to go through? Our Valdek is going to show within the demo using a React uh, based uh, sample, which is available for you for download. Just to quickly explain, SharePoint Patterns and Practices is a uh, community driven initiative coordinated by the SharePoint Engineering. Uh, but we work together with MVPs like Waldek and Paolo and Irvin and, and many, many other MVPs plus community people uh, to provide code samples, guidance documentations. We have monthly community calls, case studies, and so on. We concentrate on a SharePoint uh, development mainly. Uh, so the areas are SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Add-ins for SharePoint Online and on-premises. Microsoft Graph is a, a, a important piece as well. And in general, Office 365 APIs. AKMS SharePoint BMP is the one address to remember. Now, let's move into the today's uh, actual today's topic, which was the cascading drop downs um, in the property pane. This is more kind of a scenario uh, or a, a case, what we want to show in practice, how to make this happen uh, from a coding perspective. So essentially, uh, what we're going to show is that you have a cascading drop downs uh, with a dependency in the property pane. So you have a one drop down, you click and select something from there, and that will then uh, download asynchronously the other set of data in the second drop down. Um, in the example case, in the demo, we, uh, this is going to be demonstrated with a, a selection first, a list, and then you're going to select an item to be shown in quotes, uh, or item data to be shown in the client side web part. The web part itself is not really the key point. The key point is more around how do we implement this asynchronous uh, dependency across these drop downs in the property pane. Um, and that's a good, uh, the third point on the slide is, is really around asynchronous uh, queries uh, based on the user selection. So we're kind of updating the situation uh, and we are actually updating the description, what are we loading uh, when based on the selection of the end user as well. Um, and this is how it looks uh, in practice. So we put a client side web part on a page. Uh, and when we actually start editing the client side web part, we get the property pane on the right side of the, the modern property pane on the right side of the page. And it is first loading the lists uh, from the site. Whenever the lists are selected, uh, you're able to then select an individual list. In this case, uh, it would be the shared documents. And then we start loading the items uh, from that particular list. And then you're able to select a particular item, uh, for example, to be shown or whatever you want to do with that particular item. In uh, our example scenario, uh, the, the selection doesn't really do that much uh, additional thing. Uh, we, we are just using a, a essentially the basic uh, web part output uh, which is available uh, right after scaffolding because we want to concentrate more on the scenario how do we make this happen uh, in the real world maybe uh, you would be able to for example use this kind of a selection if you want to show a one uh, information around one document in the front page of the or well in your web part or if you have other dependencies and data stored in a SharePoint list, uh, you would select the one item and to be then reflected uh, on the on the client side web part itself. Cool. Uh, I think that's actually enough for the for the scenario clarification. And I think the easiest way to understand um, or see this in practice is not actually concentrate on slides. Let's actually jump on the demo. And Waldek is going to do the demo. Uh, and this is a React-based implementation um, on how to make this happen. Obviously, you can do the similar kind of stuff using whatever framework. Uh, but our selection for this particular sample was React. But let's have a look on that one in practice. All right. So the web part that we have built and we want to show, 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 
show you allows you to select a list and then from that list an item. So when you add the web part first time to the page, it's just it, right? It doesn't show anything because we still didn't pick any list an item. So when we open the the pro, 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 property page, well, what what we see first is that we load lists, right? And initially, and let, let me do that again because it it, it takes only a mo moment. So when you add the web part to the page, we'll see that the two uh, uh, the the selection uh, box on the right hand side for the list and item are turned off. And then we load lists, and when 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 the lists are available, we actually enable drop down to select a list, and then then users can pick a list, right? So we add the web part to the page, we open property pane, we load lists. This one is disabled, and now it's on, right? So now that we have list of lists available in this site, we can pick a list and. Uh, take a note that currently we uh, we cannot pick an item because we didn't pick list yet, right? So we first have to pick a list, and then from that list we will get a list of I items available inside this list for us to pick. So we choose a list, and we have two of them, and then we load the list of available items in this list, and now we can choose an item. And then if we pick another list, then then we will again load items from that that list. And we will be able to pick an item from that list, right? And and whatever we choose, we show here here in web part to actually confirm that whatever we we pick in our property pane that we store that inside the web part, and from there we can use that to, to show show a, a additional info. So with that, let's have a look at how the the the, the, the this uh, works in uh, code. So let me move that to uh, the right hand side, and here is our code. So initially, when we add the web part to the page, we don't do anything, right? So let me just uh, collapse all of that. And initially, let me turn all that so that we will have a good overview of the code. Initially, let me remove the web part. So initially, when we add the web part to the page, we don't do anything, right? Because we don't want to load the list of lists that we want to have available when we uh, set the web part up. We, we don't want to load that when we only show the web part on a page. We only want to have the list of lists available when we actually open pro property pane and we uh, want to be able to pick a list, right? So now, so this event, we do that by implementing the on property pane configuration start method. So in here, we say that, okay, so the list of, of, of or the, uh, uh, drop-down that we use to pick a list should, should, should be enabled only if we already have the list of lists available, right? Initially, when we add the web part to the page, we don't. So initially, it is turned off. And actually, the same applies to items. And uh, um, the uh, a control that allows us to, to pick an item should only be enabled if we have the list of items and we selected a list. Right, because even if we uh, in the past uh, would load the list of items, it might be that we didn't pick a list yet that we change a list, right? So in that we we don't want to uh, be able to select an item, right? So here we say that if we if we have lists, we don't need to load lists anymore, right? So we break it off. But if we don't have lists, what we do then is that we show the loading in. In indicator on the page, and that's the box here. So let, let me remove the web part and add it to the page, and what you will see is a spinner and a text message. So you will see it here in three, two, one. You will see it now. So you see, so we communicate to user that we actually load um, options um, um, and that that might take a while, right? Because uh, in production, we would load that from the current site. Here we actually use a mock. So if we go to the this uh, lo lo load lists, here we use a mock and we set some time to actually illustrate how it would look like when you will wait to load the data. All right, so here we go back to the code.
So first quickly, of all, we'll... quickly on that one before we go there, just to pinpoint the fact that the display loading indicator uh, is a really easy fellow to actually use. As you can see, it's yes. just a, a method essentially uh, on the on there, or you're able to just command what's going to happen, what's the text, uh, and all of that. So yes. really, really simplistic thing to do. Yes, yes. So here actually you pass your text, and it's that, right? Yep. So then we, we load the list of lists, and when, when we have the list of lists, um, we actually uh, see if we already selected a list or not. If not, then we're done. If we have, then we have to load the list of items for that, that, that list. Right? And for that, we also need to refresh the, the pane, which we do, do, do here, because initially, uh, this one is turned off, and after we have enabled or loaded the list of lists, we actually have to enable it, so we say list dropdown disabled is false, and then we actually re refresh the pane uh, to, to, to actually refresh the current state, right? Um, so as that, and as we are done, we actually clear the indicator. And the thing is, when you do this, what it does is it removes all of the DOM inside the web part, right? So it clears the whole body. And this is exactly why we have to call render to have the web part repaint it, 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 it itself, right? Because otherwise, without this, it, 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 um, it would be just an empty block. I mean, in certain right. scenarios, that might actually make sense. But in this particular scenario, we want to render the, exactly the, the default rendering. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or yes. you might okay. have alternative renderings of, on the page, depending on the selection, right? So you're able to actually have yes. that kind of a, a process uh, there as well. So you yes. might actually render, hey, you need to still select a item now that you've selected Absolutely. whatever list. Absolutely. So, um, and also, another thing that we don't have here is that imagine that you would have an error. So you might want to be able to show that as well, that there was an error, try again. Yeah, right? that's true. And to be able to re, uh, redo the whole step. All right. So imagine now that we change, that we select a list. So when we pick a list, well, what we do then is that based on that list, we load the list of items available in that list. And once that, that's done, we enable this box here. So we pick a list, we load the items, and then once we have the items, that, that list is enabled, and from that we can pick uh, an item. So the way this works is that we subscribe to another event, which is the on property pane field changed. And in that, we get the name of property that we change, which in our case is list. So this is here, and we get the value. So we can say that, yes, we changed, we changed the list, and we actually have a list, right? So we, we didn't, didn't set that to empty. So first of all, and there are actually quite a few things that we have to do here, right? Because we override the method that we get um, out of the box. So first of all, what, what we have to do is we have to actually store the new value inside the web part, because without that, if you would reload the page, you would be back to um, empty web, 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 web part, right? So, we want, so you, you want to store the value that, that, that user picked inside the web part. Uh, then, because we selected a list, we reset the item that we might have selected previously. Because if you change a list, the item that you, that you had previously does not exist in the new list. Right, so we have to reset that and also store that inside the web part. Then we have to turn off the selection for item because based on the new list, we have to load new items available in that list. And then we refresh the, the pane so that it, it, it actually turns off the selection for item. We show that we're loading items to user. And then we load the items, we read them, we re-enable the item um, a box, then we clear indicator, we re-render the web part, and we refresh property pane. Right? So we do that whenever we select a list, we have to get through all of that to have that work correctly in web part. 
And then otherwise, if we select, for example, an item, we don't have to do anything to the list, and we don't have to lo load anything. So the only thing that, that, that we have to do is to call, actually, the base um, method, which will store the value that, 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 that the user picked in web part. Makes so, sense. Yes, so that's the whole step. And then for for the rendering part, it's simple. We don't do anything here because we just um, show the value that the user picked in web part. So we don't do anything here. And from the property pane settings point of view, the only thing, thing that we do here extra is that we bind the controls that we have to our um, arrays to our array of lists and array of items, and we also track the state whether, whether they are enabled or not. So these are the things that, that we uh, track because we want to be able to control when users actually can select a list and can select an item. Right? So we want to, to be in control of, of that, and with that, we actually track the state whether they are enabled or not. Yep. So that sums us up how you can build all of that. And all of that is built using the building blocks that you get available from SharePoint uh, uh, framework out of the, the box, right? So we use uh, uh, drop-down loading in in indicator. We, load, uh, uh, we use events. We, we use everything that is available out of the, the, the box here. Yep, and, and even if you wouldn't have a cascading dependency on those text boxes, this actually shows how to just load the basic list of uh, basic list of lists as an example or options, and how do you do the the progress indicator, status indicator as well. So there's uh, quite a lot of actually interesting uh, simplistic processes and scenarios demonstrated with this one. Yep. So with that, if um, if you don't have anything to ask, uh, then we can go back to the slides, I reckon. I think we're good to go. Yeah. Let's okay. switch back on the slides and close up the webcast. Cool. So really kind of a simple scenario, simple use case, a simple thing uh, from a, let's say, case perspective. Um, but the whole point is to show how to implement these kind of things within your property pane. Obviously, you would be able to implement a similar kind of dependency uh, also in a client-side web part if you want to have uh, a functional client-side web part with a cascading property, uh, property uh, not property pane, cascading uh, drop-downs. Um, anything else what you want to do, uh, do as a summary while deck on the on the scenario. Yeah, so um, I would en en encourage er everyone to um, check out the, the code that we share because although the sample is simplistic, it's a a scenario that you you encounter so often, right? You really often want to be able to pick an item from a list and then based on that uh, offer some, some another choice and based on that show items or show something in web part. Right, so like 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 two step choice or three step choice. That that that's a thing that that you see in web parts really a lot, and that case illustrates that really easily without um, any burden um, around it. Right, so you can just just really easily see how you implement that with everything that you get available out of the box in framework. Right, so we didn't build any. Components controls by ourselves. We only use building blocks that you get out of the box. So I would, yes, um, I would encourage everybody to give it a try and let us know um, if you would like to see anything else in that area or you would like to ask and um, anything. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Valdek, for that one. And and we will absolutely, if you have a look on the video details uh, on the on the underneath the video, uh, we will have references and links to the sample itself. So you're able to find it, you're able to download it, then, and have a close look on on how stuff has been implemented. But thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you.